So this is a basics on painting a clear base. And um, this is just on a random canvas. It has no name whatsoever. I'm just going to go in and get a little, you know, a bit of a shadow. Hit the video button. I did. I did. Okay. Um, a little bit of a... You know, shadow underneath, just kind of, kind of like it would try to get it to where a little closer to where it would be if, if this were an actual. Um, yeah, there would be foliage up here, that sort of thing. Um, So, uh, I'm going to start with some stems. You can do this with a knife or a brush. And I'm just going to put in some dark stems to have a, have a base. Ultimately, you kind of want them, you don't want them to be perfect. They're, they're not going to be exactly the same sizes or thicknesses or typically anyway, and just, you know, just try to get them in some sort of way. You can always lose some if you have too many or you don't want those bits very, it looks very exact and crisscross, but I can break that up as I build it. Um, Go ahead and you know re reference. I'm going to say my light source is coming from this side. That, you know, reference that I'm going to have a lighter there. So the biggest thing is to get the environment that's around the base that's actually behind it. You know, put it in. <coughs> I'm just mixing up a gray blue to act as my um, <coughs> to be lighter. Sorry. Or somebody. I'll wait. Sorry. Right. Wait for you to come back. <laughs> so I want the, um, I don't want too much to have to deal with too much, uh, paint, but I want that. I want it in there. And it's perfectly fine to take it to this point. Um, just, you know, an early stage and stop and let it dry. Um, but the first thing is I want it to just get in some relation to what's going on behind it. Again, this will be very simple, simplistic. And then the next thing I'm going to do is make it more interesting and start building it up. So I'm going to work kind of back and forth. This is a board, so it's hard to get, get it to sit up where I want it, but... So I want some kind of variation in between what's going on behind it um, and what's in the base. So you can do, that's too light, you can do lighter. Or you could pop a little bit of color in there, you've got options. 
I'll show you what I mean. So I created a little bit of a difference so you can see the base. So de depending on how much of a difference you have there depends on how much you see that line, obviously, this, this edge. So if I want to tone that down, I just get those values a little closer together. Um, so this, this edge is going to, both of the edges are going to be important. And it's best to kind of sneak up onto it rather than to get there too fast, just like everything I've taught pretty much. So it's a, I typically add and subtract a lot too on, the, on stems and things. So you kind of get the little bit of the vibration of what's going on underneath. And on a, this is a board, so it's, it's uh, on a canvas, I would get back to that underpainting a lot easier, which can be um, kind of nice little pop here and there of that. Um, yes. Boards paint so differently than canvases. So I put that brighter one down, but then I went back in and picked up some of that color. And then really you could kind of let it dry. Um, and it's easier to work on when it's dry, but. Because the base is going to be a little different, and all kinds of color can bounce around. But you know, you can put in little variations if you wanted, depending on what else is going on in your painting. You also kind of this lip down here. If you study bases a little bit, what they where how the light bounces around. Sometimes you can kind of see this ellipse down at the bottom. Um, so you can just sort of kind of mimic that a little bit without, you know, getting too detailed into it. Um, but oftentimes it's less is more and you just don't, the big thing is you just do not want this to look muddy and um, compared to the rest of the painting. So, but I really like when you kind of put those lights in and then you take them back up. Muddy meaning like chalky looking. Um, if I did. If I got in here with too much white, it would see how it's starting to get. See that? That's what I don't want. I can lighten the value without getting pasty looking like that. See how much cleaner that is? Do you usually make a waterline or not? Um, the waterline is tricky because I don't want the waterline to be the subject matter. So you have to be careful about making those. I honestly don't really think about them too much, but I do put them in sometimes. Um, for
for example, but the reason I put them in is because if I'm working, what I don't want is this, this, um, this being a piece, this being a piece, and this being a piece. I want this all to live and breathe together. So sometimes when I'm working um, in, in, in between these uh, stems, trying to make that not happen, I'll end up putting a little bit of a reference. But it just depends on how the painting's going. But it's it's a it's it takes the patience. A lot of this that I'm showing you guys. I mean, you think, oh, look at that loose, juicy start, and look at that. And, but you, I think you kind of are getting the idea of how thoughtful and 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 the the restraint and the patience it takes to um, to be successful with that. Kind of holding yourself back. Stopping and letting things dry. Um, working back and forth. It doesn't have a whole lot of pizzazz because there's nothing else, absolutely nothing else going on here except for this little base demo. But So if you had pink flowers in there, would you reflect some um, pink in the center? Um, maybe, as long as it doesn't look too contrived, like too, oh, she put some pink in there. Um, I'd rather it be like, you're looking at the painting, you're looking at the painting, you go, oh, and there's some pink in there. It's like an afterthought. I don't want, I wouldn't want you to look at it and go, look at the pink in that vase. So, I just made a big mess right there. But um, that's not what I wanted to do. But then also you got to remember you'd have like got everything going a little bit against me. Working on a panel that won't stay put, and so you're gonna have like. that kind of stuff going on. But I think you get the idea. Mm -hmm. And I'll pull up the other one that's, see that to, right in there is too light to me. That's why I keep going back there. So that's why I keep fussing with it. Um, that's what that's all about. Um, but eventually, eventually I'll get it, I'll get it right. Um, and then if you know if you did want I mean, it's not ready for it but if you did want you know a water line or you know you just you come across it that's too light but um, you come across it but then you have to break it back up does that make sense mm -hmm. you can't just come across you have to um, in places and that's kind of how you get a water line. I've got something dirty somewhere. So you want this, this a subtle reference. You don't want anything too obvious. So this in here is probably gonna work. Over here, that's gonna be distracting. So your water line has to get a little bit darker as you come across to. I like that water line, that's not bad. Oops, that's not bad. Uh, 
but I would worry about getting the stems and all that other stuff working right before I start working, worry about water lines because they're hard. Faces are hard. It's starting to come together. And then you can do little things in the end, like, let's see, painting is it. You got a little pop. Barbara Flowers likes to do this, Chappie. She likes to get in there with that pure color on the edge. Then, but you want to, you don't want it to be the same everywhere. So you break it up. See how much that helped it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you don't want to get too repetitive, but you can do it on the dark side too, but just a different color. But I don't want it everywhere, or then it loses its appeal. Mm -hmm. But do you see how, how ugly that was? Or it was ugly for a while, till it wasn't, you know? I'm just gonna get that shadow underneath. And there's a the base. This needs a little work right here. Um, I'll see what I can do real fast, but then otherwise we'll look at the other one that I think is almost finished. just a little goofy there I'm gonna leave that alone for now so that's that's that and then this one's almost done and look at that <clears throat> mm. so I'll probably could do a little more of this kind of waterline thing across here. I think adding that little pop of, um, that little pop of blue like I did there might be nice. That's too bright. I'll work a little bit more in there. It's pretty wet, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But hope that helps. Yeah. Yes.